Hi everyone, I am Professor Shri. Welcome to the session on aircraft handling qualities, in particular Cooper Harper scale. Subscribe to the channel to learn more about engineering and management, science and technology stuff. These are the contents of the video. Introduction to the topic, brief history, evolution of the Cooper Harper scale, procedure to enable it, level by level explanation about the scale and finally advantages and limitations. Let me start with introduction. Handling qualities are defined as those qualities or characteristics of an aircraft that govern the ease and precision with which a pilot is able to perform the tasks required in support of an aircraft role. For an aircraft to have very good performance, it should have good dynamic system and the handling quality of the pilot. To perform the task that is to fly an aircraft, there should be a smooth coordination between dynamic response characteristics of the plane and human pilot acting together to perform the task. And also human pilots are adaptive in nature. Now, whole weight is upon the airplane designer. The designer should design in such a way that airplane must be good dynamic quality when operated by an adaptive controller. Also, there are rapid changes in aeronautical technologies and aviation industries, which have led to groundbreaking development in the aircraft handling qualities. As seen in introduction, the definition of handling qualities was defined by George E. Cooper and Robert P. Harper Jr. in 1969. Before this, the handling qualities were not a separate discipline. They were done on a whim or by experience, skills and knowledge of the pilot. But since 1969, many design standards, various testing methodologies and analytical response criteria were developed which resulted in a separate system aimed at ensuring that neither operational performance or safety are compromised by deficiencies in hand. Two well-known airplanes during World War I era in the United States are Curtis JN4, popularly known as Jenny, and Thomas Morse S4C, known as the Morse flight. Pilots had to learn to fly them by reference to pitch altitude as force field was unreliable. In flying the Jenny, there was a distinct tendency for pilots to over control in pitch. The Jenny was flown by the wind in phase technology for directional control. The Morse was even more unstable, requiring a forward push on the stick in turn and exhibiting a tendency for over controlling with the rudder. During World War II, a lot of new aircraft were looming the skies and new aviation technologies came into picture. Combat planes were pushed in the limits, their operational envelopes and beyond. With this, adverse effects of compressibility were encountered as sonic speeds developed over the airfoil section during high-speed dives. A major effort was made to understand the correct handling deficiencies that resulted from heavy tuck under control forces, aeroelastic control, reversal effects, buffeting, and many more. Finding airplane response characteristics by using the ground and in-flight simulator with pilots carrying out several tasks to evaluate the handling qualities were the major research areas and a lot of tests were conducted and reported during late 1940s and 1950s. In 1947, Bell X-1 became the 
first aircraft to break the sound barrier. Like during 1947 to 1953, Dollars D5581, known as Skystreak, collected data in the transonic region about stability, control, loads, buffeting, and handling qualities. In 1953, Dollars D5582, known as Skyrocket, it became the first aircraft to reach Mach 2. Skyrocket collected data about handling qualities, wing loads, and stability and control, especially pitch up. During 1948 to 1953, Convair XF 92A used mainly for experimental purposes stability and control pitch up and lift over track measurements were obtained which contributed to the technology used to develop f102 f106 xf 2y1 c dart and b58 aircrafts during 1954 to 1956 bell x2 famously known as Starbuster, became the first aircraft to reach Mach 3 and also first to fly higher than 1 lakh feet altitude. It collected data on aerodynamic heating and stability and control effectiveness at high speeds and altitudes. Between 1952 to 1955, Dollars X3 known as Stiletto. Stiletto aircraft tested new materials like titanium and collected data on stability and control, pressure distribution and flight loads. These were some of the major innovations and technological changes happened during the time. All the data were collected from the aircraft performance by George Cooper and Robert Harper to make the modified Cooper Harper scale. Initially in 1957, a rating scale was introduced along with the discussion of the subject, understanding and interpreting pilot opinion. The scale was referred to as Cooper scale, also called as the Cooper pilot opinion rating scale. And it was designed by George Cooper. It piqued the interest of international aviation sector. It had some deficiencies and an interim revised scale was introduced in 1966. A final version of this Cooper Harper scale was published in the year 1969. This was published by NASA TND 5153 in April 1969. The title of the paper was the use of pilot rating in the evaluation of aircraft handling qualities by George E. Cooper and Robert P. Harper Jr. and thus the name Cooper Harper Handling Quality Rating Scale. The scale has a decision tree format and was used to access aircraft handling and control by the operator but could also be considered to assess workload. Since a lot of technological innovations happened during the time, almost all the aviation sectors became fully automated. So by taking all these limitations and technological fast forwarding, the new modified Cooper Heart Scale was introduced in 1984. So the modified Cooper Heart Scale was developed to be more appropriate in complex and automated systems where operators are not required to actively control systems but are more often monitoring, perceiving, evaluating and problem solving. These points or concepts were introduced by Walter W. Wehrville and John G. Caselli in 1983. The modified Cooper Harper scale not only does the regular function but also has some additional like mental workload, task accomplishment, ability, errors, performance and difficulty 
and also there are things like assessing communication perception and cognitive studies thus you get the final handling quality rating scale that the official name but simply called as cooper harper scale the handling quality rating scale was presented in 1984 right brother lectureship in aeronautics by the cooper and harper Here is a rare picture from left to right of Bob Innes, Don Henley, Larry Clausing, Bill McAvoy, Fred Drinkwater and George Cooper respectively. They were all stalwarts in the field of flying qualities and all worked together in flight operations branch NACA 1955. Here NACA NACA is National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics which was a federal agency in USA later it was renamed as you all know National Aeronautics and Space Administration NASA so this is the Cooper Harper scale it is a rating scale a set of criteria used by test pilots and the flight test engineers to evaluate the handling qualities of aircraft while performing a task during a flight test let me explain the details of this in a few minutes but before that we need to know certain steps to apply this rating scale or procedure to evaluate the handling qualities of the pilot step 1 define the task for analysis here the type of task analyzed are dependent upon the focus of the analysis to analyze a full set of tasks it will take a lot of time and also a lot of skilled people are required and so it is advisable to use a set of tasks that use all aspects of the system under analysis step 2 conduct a hierarchical task analysis hta it is an analysis of task performance expressed in terms of hierarchy of goals operations and plans with this analysis the analysts and participants will understand the task fully step 3 participants selection this step involves selecting the appropriate participants and are to be involved in the analysis Sometimes just random selection can also be done but if workloads are considered across ranks or experience levels then a proper selection is needed step 4 briefing about the purpose and techniques it is important that the participants must be briefed about the analysis they must be briefed about the purpose of the analysis some insights to the handling quality rating scale technique these can be done by giving them some kind of workshops some small tasks or by giving them to complete a workload profile questionnaire all these things should be done before the tasks under analysis are performed step 5 execution of the task the participant must perform the task under analysis and then the final step that is step 6 cooper harper scale after the tasks are completed by the participants cooper harper scale must be implemented if there are multiple tasks step 5 and step 6 must be repeated and must work through the decision tree to arrive at a workload rating for the task under analysis this completes the assessment and rating of pilots or flight test engineers that is the participants with the help of modified cooper harper scale now let's come to the core topic of this video cooper harper scale we have discussed how the rating scale came into existence now we'll discuss about what is cooper harper scale how does it work and all the stuff related to the rating scale the cooper harper scale consists of four levels and 
10 point rating system as you can see in the image. If the rating is 10, that means the condition is really bad and do not fly the plane. Improvement is a must. And if the rating is 1, uno, then the handling quality is excellent. You can go ahead with your mission. Based on this, the 10 rating points are divided into four different levels. Let's start with level 1. Level 1 will be having adequate flying and handling qualities. All the technical things are perfect. Pilot workload is less and it's a perfect day, which leads to the pilot is very happy to fly the airplane. This level covers three rating points. That is one, two and three. If the rating is one, the aircraft is excellent and very desirable to fly. Almost no task is there for the pilot. Mental effort of the pilot is minimal. If the rating is true, the aircraft is in good condition. It's easy to handle it and there are some very minor deficiencies. But even here also, there isn't any task or any operation for the pilot. Here the pilot mental effort is very low and the desired performance is easily attainable. Now, if the rating is 3, some mild difficulties are there in the aircraft handling. So, a very mild involvement of the pilot and his or her mental effort is required for handling the aircraft. This level, that is level 1, is attainable only if the handling is controllable. The aircraft should have the specified performance with small pilot workload and there's no need of any improvement. Next is level 2. In level 2, airplane can be flown but with increased pilot workload. This level also have three rating points that is 4, 5 and 6. If the rating is 4, the aircraft is having minor but annoying difficulties. The pilot is required to involve moderately with a moderate high mental effort. If the rating is 5, some objectionable deficiencies are present in the aircraft which requires considerable amount of task and high mental effort to attain adequate system performance. So if the rating is 6, there are some very objectionable difficulties but can be achievable by the pilot with extensive compensation and maximum mental effort. So in order to attain level 2, there should be solvable difficulties, it should be a tolerate workload to the pilot and improvement in the aircraft characteristics is required. Now coming to the next level, I mean level 3. Here aircraft can be controlled and flown safe, but pilot workload is excessive. Some major deficiencies and difficulties are present here in the aircraft controls. Even in level 3, there are 3 point rating 7, 8 and 9. In this level, without improvement, the required performance cannot be attained. I repeat, without improvement, the required performance cannot be attained. At rating point 7, the errors will be there, but the maximum effort by the pilot. It can be brought down to a moderate level. If the rating is 8, there are some large or lot of errors present in the aircraft and maximum effort is required by the pilot to reduce it to some extent. Maximum effort as in workload as well as mental effort. Now if the rating of the aircraft is 9, an intense pilot work and mental effort is required to accomplish the task, but still frequent and numerous errors persist. If you say the aircraft is at level 3, then the difficulties are controllable, but deficiencies are there and improvement is a must requirement. 
finally the last level it is when the rating is 10 there will be some major deficiencies improvement is a must and system redesign is mandatory so this is the concept of cooper harper scale or you can call it any how you want like modified cooper harper scale or cooper harper handling quality rating scale or simply cooper harper scale it has certain advantages and disadvantages advantages like it is inexpensive unobstructive no complex techniques are involved a lot of validating studies have been conducted and it is pretty easy to analyze some of the disadvantages are they are unidimensional manual control tasks post trial collection of data and nowadays you have some new assessment techniques presently there are some new workload assessment techniques like workload profile nasa task load index tlx bedford scale which is somewhat similar to cooper harper scale military acute concussion evaluation mace subjective workload assessment technique swat etc so in this session topics discussed were some introduction to the topic history and evolution of cooper harper rating scale procedure or steps to apply the rating scale explanation on cooper harper handling quality rating scale and finally some advantages disadvantages and new modern techniques with this we have come to the end of our video once again subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to stay tuned to the upcoming videos thank you and bye bye